Sometimes, while walking around a river, you might find something interesting buried in the bank. Many people make a hobby out of searching for trinkets and treasures, finding all sorts of things, from arrowheads to old coins to even, if they're lucky, gold. What many people don't expect to find while digging around riverbeds is a steam locomotive, never mind 15 of them. As railways developed and workloads got bigger, it was natural that newer, more powerful and up-to-date engines would be needed to do the work. This, of course, led to older, less powerful engines becoming obsolete and in need of disposal. New Zealand Railways found themselves in need of disposing of some redundant steam engines in 1927. However, they also had a few other problems to deal with. At the time, the value of scrap metal made it very uneconomical to break up or sell any rolling stock they had, meaning they were stuck finding finding alternate ways of disposing of their obsolete engines and wagons. On top of this, much of the Southland Plains was made up of loose rock and mud, making it difficult to keep the heavy railway lines stable. A particular point of trouble was a bend in the Oreti River near Branksholm, which was prone to eroding. Large rocks and other debris was tipped along the bend, however, this was prone to washing away after heavy rains and flooding. This was a problem for the railway that partially ran beside the river and the rail bridge that crossed it. Looking for solutions, New Zealand Railways tried to find alternatives for reinforcing the embankment. With a load of engines in need of disposal and a riverbank in need of reinforcement, it was decided that some of these engines would be dumped into the river to form a sort of defensive barrier to help prevent erosion. Fifteen retired engines were stripped of any useful parts and taken to Brank's home, where they were tipped into the river by a steam crane. These engines included a J-Class, 4Ks, 2Ps, 5Vs, and a U-Class. Several old boilers were also dumped at the site, as well as locomotive tenders and parts of several U-Class engines in the 1950s. Locomotives were also dumped in this manner elsewhere in New Zealand, such as Omoto and Omaru. The barrier the engines formed wasn't perfect, but it worked much better than the rock barriers they replaced. As the years went by, the river shifted and newer reinforcements were put in place, leaving the site where the engines were dumped accessible. Naturally, it became a point of interest for sightseers and rail enthusiasts alike, as some of the engines were partially exposed, making it a fascinating site to explore. It also became a point of interest for scrap metal hunters, who have tried to salvage copper from the engine's fireboxes and bronze from the wheel bearings. By 1971, steam power had been phased out in New Zealand, and as such, enthusiasts put greater efforts into finding and restoring or preserving older steam engines. Some attention was focused on the Branksholm embankment, and in 1974, one of the K-Class engines was dug out and taken to the Plains Vintage Railway to be restored. As the years have passed, more and more of these engines have been dug up, either to be preserved, restored, or simply for spare parts. Sadly, four of the retrieved engines were too damaged to salvage, and were outright scrapped, while the rest still remain in decrepit condition. The only exhumed engine to run again is K-Class number 88, the first engine to be retrieved and successfully restored to prove that it was plausible to do the same for other engines retrieved from embankments. While we're yet to get another river engine restored to working order, it was all thanks to the work done by enthusiasts to restore number 88 that efforts are still being made to this day to recover more of the engines. So, overall, while it's not exactly a perfect happy ending for all engines involved, New Zealand's riverbed engines tell an interesting story of railway development and camaraderie around rescuing locomotives that most would consider not worth saving. Let's hope then that any future endeavours to rescue these engines goes well, and hopefully that no more engines will get put into the river again anytime soon. Subscribe for more.